welcome back to another day on the ranch. Today, uh, busy morning. We have the cattle farrier coming for the first time. Um, we were going to attempt our like farrier for our horses. Does do cattle, but they need to be cooperative cattle, like just picking up feet. This guy's got the chute and everything. You guys will see, because um, cattle are not, they're not horses. They don't just lift their feet for you very nicely, typically. You can train them, but it's just a lot less common. Um, so they have chutes. They have two different versions. They have one that they put them in and it turns them on their side and then they do their feet. Or they have these chutes they go into and then they like, the, some kind of mechanism grabs their foot, basically. Um, so yeah, we have cow farrier coming today to do all of the cows and our older heifers, like our yearlings. That will be Emmy here, Delilah over there, Essie and Sadie over there, and then our new girl, which you guys haven't been properly introduced to yet, which is Maisie right there. Daisy is our calf. She doesn't need it yet. Um, I'm not even sure if they need it yet, but. I'm assuming this is a custom built rig. You can't order one of these. Yeah, you can actually can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, as you guys saw, we are doing hooves today. I'm gonna pop in and out of this video. Um, so we did record like the whole process of doing everything, but some of it was hard to hear, like what he was saying or what I was saying. Um, and I just wanted to like fill in the blanks because I shared this on Instagram and a lot of people were super interested in the details behind it. So I was like, you know, I'll just hop on and I will pop in and out of this video and share kind of like the minute details around it. She's like, what is happening? <laughs> yeah, well, there's no part of it that's particularly fun, but we like healthy feet, so. Tim's going to be so bummed he's missing this. If you guys have been around on TikTok at all and you're interested in farm stuff, you've probably seen like the hoof uh, side of TikTok when it comes to care for cow's hooves. Um, it is a little bit of a debate I have learned actually in the bovine world. Um, a lot of beef, um, like cattle ranchers, don't do hoof care. And to me that makes sense because a lot of their stock is going off to be slaughtered at two years old. Um, and at that point, like it's really not needed. But in my opinion, I think breeding stock and all dairy cows, obviously, should have their hooves done um, because they can get things like abscesses you know any sort of things just like a horse can um you know they don't need care every six weeks <laughs> like a horse does but at least one to two times a year i think it's important to do now if you live in super rocky terrain you're not going to need this done near as often maybe not even at all um but because our girls are being you know rotated every single day they're really only on pasture they're not at a traditional dairy um where they might be walking on like cement and rocks a lot um and unless they're walking through our lower quality pastures that have some rock in it they don't really walk in rocks a lot so um their hooves were definitely due to be done but they weren't overdone you don't want to go too often to get them too thin yeah you will uh-huh for sure uh, uh pretty get long like she needs it but yeah she until she got like that again, I wouldn't. Okay. You know, I mean, I wouldn't do it every six weeks. Uh, well, yeah. I used to like Scott Davis is over in Moore's. We go to his twice a year. Okay. So. Mm, that makes sense. So we're probably looking at like once a year, maybe once every eight to ten months that our girls need to have their hooves done. So um, that's kind of what we have figured out from this first time getting it done. I would grab her now. Go ahead, girl. Oh, it's, it's okay. Oh, I know. It's okay. Okay, girl. There you go, Essie. Ryan's got his baby back. 
so what you guys are about to see is Sadie, one of our dairy cows. She's the Holstein Jersey Cross. Um, she got something called hairy heel wart like a month or so back. Um, we tried treating it ourselves. Now we don't have a shoot or anything like that, so it was really hard for us to get hold of her. Um, we ended up having to like put her in the stanchion and like tie her legs, and like it was a mess, and it was really difficult only to finally get it on her because she was just exhausted from fighting which like isn't what you want to do that stresses out your cattle we didn't want to do that but it was our only option and you have to treat hairy heel work because it's contagious it can pass to the other cattle um the reason for it isn't quite known like people think like from them standing in mud now again we rotate our girls pretty regularly they're not really standing in mud a lot but it happened around the time it had rained a ton so even though she wasn't necessarily standing in mud she was just standing in wet grass like a lot um, and so that's kind of what the vet had thought it was. Um, and so our last resort as well was finding somebody that could come and trim hooves because it's typically a hoof trimmer that would actually treat that. Um, if you don't have like a cow that's willing to lift their feet. Say he's gonna be longer, right? Than any of the others, right? Yeah, cause she's got a bad butt. Yeah, because so we're sending them out. Get your head in, girl. Let's see how raw it is. Uh huh. Do it that hard. I mean, I can just barely touch it. Yeah, anytime I do anything to it, she yeah, starts yeah. kicking. Right, Poor girl. So, what are these darker spots on? It's just, I don't want to take it too much. I could probably take just, I mean, like paper thin more. Uh huh. But I don't want to get her too too thin. Mm -hmm. It's just going to be trouble. She steps on a little gravel out in the pasture. Gotcha. And I'll throw it just like a horse. No, thank you. Yeah, let's avoid that. And it won't hurt. I mean, like the animals and stuff. It's uh -huh. just stinks about they won't mess with your dogs or anything like that. It ain't going to hurt. Nothing. Gotcha. He is putting this stuff called copper sulfate on her foot. It's actually a pond cleaner. We did try some natural options first. We always try to do natural options first if we can. We did a garlic honey um, on her and it did help. We noticed a big improvement, but it came right back after. So this stuff is supposed to just dry it out um, really quickly and get rid of it. And so he puts that on there, wraps it up really good. And then about five days later, we removed it. So, and she's been fine. She's not limping anymore. It hasn't come back. Everything has been good. So yeah, that was kind of what happened with her and it didn't ever pass to anybody else. Um, we were doing more, like we were spraying hydrogen peroxide and doing Epsom salt as well. We tried multiple things and then we're trying to like spray the other girls to make sure they didn't get it. But the good news is like, since we move our girls regularly, lower chance of it being passed onto the others as well. So yeah, nobody else ever got it. It was only her and now she is all good that we can tell. She's always gonna have like a little almost wart looking thing there is what he said. But unless it's bothering her, like if you try to touch it and it's bugging her, then that means it's actually back. But otherwise it's benign basically. You stuck, girl. <laughs> oh, she ain't gonna stay in there. Essie, it's okay. Sadie, you're going home with them. Hey, we just back her out. Yeah, that was kind of really the only thing um, that was wrong. Everyone else's feet were great. They were due for a trim, but it wasn't anything over the top. They weren't extra long or anything. Um, it definitely was stressful for them, like hoof trimming. Um, if they could just lift their feet would be great, but none of them will co cooperate like that. And obviously we would rather have healthy feet for a short amount of stress. Um, by the way, we have chicks in here um, versus just like letting their, their hooves get overgrown. So we ended up paying about roughly $70 a head to get their hooves done, um, which isn't bad. Like I pay $75 to get front shoes every six weeks uh, per horse. 
so it's comparable, but I'm only doing this one to two times a year. So it's relatively inexpensive. And if you can take your cat, your cattle to a hoof trimmer, um, he was only going to charge us 30 if we could take them there. Uh, one, we don't have a trailer that is on our list of things to get, but two, the biggest thing being that we have dairy cows and dairy cattle are just known that if you change anything draft, like even if it's not even drastic, like even a small change can throw off their production because they get stressed out for any amount of time and like it just screws with them. Um, now obviously this was still going to stress them out a bit and it did mess with production for about a day or two, but then they were just fine and went back up. But taking them off of the property and to somewhere else would be way more stressful and probably impact production way more um, versus just having them come here. So it was worth spending a little bit of extra money to make sure that we could keep it as low stress as possible. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of it. You guys saw the process of it. It was really quite simple. Um, he uses just a a good old grinder <laughs> to uh, remove you know any excess and he did talk about and I don't know if you guys could hear because um, I saw like some dark spots still on their hooves and I was concerned that they were possibly abscesses he uses this thing which I think I got a video of that like clamps and he like pushes on the foot because I think I think he was looking for soft spots if it was soft it was probably like an abscess underneath I'm, I'm not sure don't quote me on that but that's what he used to look for abscesses um, and all of them were clear they didn't have anything but I'd asked him why they still had the dark spots and he had said specifically that he doesn't trim as much as he technically could because if you trim too much and make that sole too thin then all they have to do is like step on a rock and then you know you'll end up with a lame cow um, and like I said our lower quality pastures do have a decent amount of rock in them so we don't want to mess with that as well as they come and go on our like gravel driveway when they're getting milked so um, I'm glad he, you know, was making sure not to over trim either, um, to make sure leave that little bit extra, um, just so that they're good to go. And it, it's, again, it's kind of similar to farrier work with horses, you know, when they're being trimmed for shoes versus when they're being trimmed for, um, bare feet. It's very, done very differently. You know, they leave a little bit more on when you are going to have just a barefoot trim versus putting shoes on, um, for that same reason. You don't wanna end up having a horse go lame because it was trimmed too thin. One of the biggest things I've learned about um, cattle hoof trimming is it's actually really hard to find someone that does cattle hoof trimming in your area. Um, at least someone that like has a mobile setup um, for us in North Carolina. But basically when it came to Google searching, I found nothing. I could not find anyone that did cattle hoof trimming that was actually like in our vicinity where it wouldn't cost me an arm and a leg for them to travel to us. So um, I was very happy to find these guys um, through uh, actually my horse trainer. So basically though, it's pretty simple. They have different shoots. If you've been on TikTok and seen it, sometimes they walk in and it's like a device that grabs their foot and lifts it up. Sometimes it's like what you see here with our girls where they walk in, it like kind of holds them in and then it turns them on their side. I think that's really it. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything. I just wanna make sure you guys can like fully understand all the details of it. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, um, give it a thumbs up. If there are any other questions you have about it, like this is our first time experiencing, like having it done. So I don't know a ton, but I might be able to answer it. Um, so if you guys want to leave those down below, that's fine. And we will see you guys in the next video. Bye.